language could be thought of as a group a system of symbols that conveys or represents meaning. Now, some of these symbols are words, spoken words. And when we say spoken words, we mean speech as a way to convey a language. Speech itself is not the language. It's the symbols or the words that are the language and the meanings that they convey. Another kind of language that's not spoken is sign language. And it's been, it's been deemed a formal language just as good or legitimate as spoken languages are. All of you know about written language, what you read, what you write. That's a kind of language too. A quick and kind of cheating way to say it is, it's about nurture and nature. It's about the brain and about what the child learns after they're born from experience. What they hear, for example, what they see. So an example of how the brain influences language development is that babies before 10 months old can hear the distinctions between sounds of every language in the world. They're called citizens of the world before 10 months. So for example, um, the er versus a l sound is not distinguishable by Japanese people. But Japanese babies before 10 months can distinguish it. After 10 months, they can't. And that's because the brain changes in response to what it is exposed to, what the ears hear. And so if it hears Japanese over and over again, because there's no um, distinction between er and lil, it won't create classes of, um, or groupings of nerve cells that distinguish between those. And eventually, the brain of Japanese people won't be able to distinguish that sound after 10 months. So that's an example of how the brain um, changes in response to the environment and then later constrains what the environment can teach the brain.